Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday afternoon. Hope yours is going well. We've got another Seahawks video to get to today, but first, we just hit 2,930 subscribers to the YouTube channel, blowing up lately. Shout out to all the subscribers, and special tip of the cap goes to the channel members, especially new channel members, Washi, Jason Baker, to returning channel members, and Wilmer Williams, and elite channel members, Brandon McKell, Scott Todd, Hasher for MVP, VGK Tigers 75, Rye Guy 1218, Brendan Nelson's haircut, Salacious Crumb, It's Hoof, and The Reno. Today we are going to be talking about more salary cap stuff, but this one to me is actually pretty darn straightforward, so let's just go ahead and jump right into the current salary cap situation for the 2021 Seattle Seahawks. Spotrack has their current amount of cap space listed as 3.9 million, basically. If you take a look over here on the right side of the screen, right above my head, estimated cap space as of right now is $3.9 million. However, this does not account for eight players who we know are going to be counting against the cap in 2021. Dunlap, Ford, Fuller, Hyder, Neal, Ogbwehi, Simmons, and Woods. Um, Al Woods alone, combined with Jordan Simmons, is probably going to take up all of that $3.9 million. So you can take a look at these players, and you can pretty clearly see, as of this moment, we are over the cap by probably $15 million or so. Now, the ways in which we can get around this are pretty obvious. You can restructure with Wilson, you can restructure with Myers, you can restructure with Wagner, you can cut a couple of players on the lower tier of the roster, such as, say, Danny Etling or Tommy Champion, you can restructure Gabe Jackson, you can extend a couple of players, but today we're going to be talking about one very specific thing that the Seahawks need to do right now for multiple reasons, slam dunk, home run, get it done, Everybody knows we need to do this. We just need to do it. And that thing is extending Jamal Adams. So let's take a look at Jamal Adams' current contract with the Seahawks, which currently lasts one more season and has a cap hit of $9.9 million, just under $9.9 million. So as of right now, Jamal Adams is counting $9.9 million against the salary cap. Now... The most recent big safety contract was Justin Simmons with the Denver Broncos, who signed a contract that was worth somewhere around $15.25 million a year. And we all know that Jamal Adams is going to be seeking and almost certainly getting a contract that sets a new record for safety average annual value. So the first impression some people might get is why would we want to extend Jamal Adams to a contract that pays him more than $16 million a year when his current cap hit is less than 10. How is that going to save us cap space? It can, and it almost certainly will, and today I'm going to break down why. And look, there are obvious reasons why this team needs to extend Jamal Adams. He's an excellent player. He's a player who is relatively young still. He's going to be 26 this year. He's a guy we traded a lot to get, meaning that... To let him go after 2021 would be a complete disaster. We did not give up two first-round picks, a third-round pick, and a decent player for a guy to play for us for two years and then skedaddle. So the extension for Jamal Adams 99.9% .9 of the time is going to come. The only question is when. Is it now, mid-season, after the draft, after the season maybe? When is it going to come? The only question is when, not if. But another reason why the team needs to do it now is what I'm about to get into. Like I said, as of right now, the Seahawks are over the salary cap by about, I'd estimate, 15 to $16 million. I might go more into that later. And extending Jamal Adams is one way you can free up a little bit of cap space and make the rest of your job just a little bit easier. So let's take a look at some of the highest paid safeties in the league by average annual value. So sorting by AAV, 
we can see that the top name on this list is Justin Simmons, who is the first safety in NFL history to sign for more than 15. And then you have Buda Baker, Eddie Jackson, Kevin Beard, and Landon Collins, who have all signed in the last couple of se few seasons. Let's take a look at their contracts here real quick. So, Justin Simmons, let's start with him. He signed a contract worth more than $15 million per year over the next four years. His first year cap hit, the cap hit he's going to be on this year, not even $6 million, $5.75 million. And then they load the larger cap hits into future seasons. As you can see, $19 million in 2022, $18 million in 2023, $18 million in 2024. So this first year cap hit is downright tame. It might have cost more to... I mean, it would have cost a lot more to just franchise tag the dude. This is a cap hit that's very, very manageable. And this is for the current highest paid safety on an AAV basis in the game. All right, let's take a look at the next guy on the list, Buda Baker. He signed a contract last year that gave him almost $15 million a year over four years, just slightly less than the Justin Simmons contract. What's his first year cap hit? Or what was his first year cap hit? 3.8 million. Not even. 3.8 million. Downright cheap. Al Woods is probably going to have a cap hit almost this amount this year for us. And then in 2021, by the way, it's only 7.8 million. This is how you can manipulate the cap as a smart NFL team. We've got a smaller than usual cap this year. So push the money later on. I know it's going to hurt a little bit later. Believe me, these teams are going to be feeling the pain of some of these deals down the line. But look at how you can manipulate the cap to make things manageable in the short term and have problems that you can deal with down the line. Now, again, if you take a look at uh, Buda Baker's contract, $15 million in 2022, $17 million in 2023, and then 2024, $18 million. The cap hits definitely get fat. But these first two years are downright manageable. 2020, uh, the first year of this extension was nothing. All right, let's keep going. Eddie Jackson. He got a deal that gave him $14.6 million a year. First year cap hit, $3.7 million. $3.7, that is practically nothing. And this year, it's only going to be $5.1 million. Again, very, very cheap. And again, you can see how this cap hit hurts down a little bit down the line as you go down to the years, you know, 15 million, 17 million, 18 million. It keeps getting bigger and bigger, and this might hurt later. You've also got a little bit of void money in 2025, but this is how you can abuse the cap in order to manage cap hits when you need to and let them get fat when you can live with it. Kevin Baird, Biard from the Titans, 14.1 million a year. First year cap hit, four not not even four not even four point one million, just over four million. Second year cap hit, four point seven million basically. And then the last few years they get fat, obviously. But this is how this is how much the Titans are gonna have to give Kevin Byard under the cap in the first two years of this deal. And then Landon Collins. He got a deal that gave him $14 million a year. First year cap hit was $3.8 million. This is how teams get these big, expensive players under the cap. All right, so that was just safeties. And the first thing some people might be thinking is, well, Jamal Adams is going to break the bank as far as safeties go. He's going to set a new record, and it's probably not going to be a big record. He's probably going to get way more than Justin Simmons. A lot of people think Jamal Adams is going to get something like 18, 19, maybe 20 million a year. Okay. So obviously the comparison you can make between Jamal Adams and the current highest paid safeties in the league is a little tenuous, right? So it might not be so easy to bump his cap hit down. So let's take a look at some of the highest paid players in the league by average annual value period. Let's take a look at some of the players who are getting paid around $20 million a year under contracts they have recently signed. So let's just select a few random guys. Let's start with uh, Frank Clark. He signed a contract a couple years ago with the Chiefs that gave him almost $21 million a year over five years. This is a $100 million contract. 
tough to believe that Jamal Adams' contract is going to be much more than this. I don't think he's going to get much higher than the nine, fi- the low, low, low nine-figure deal that Frank Clark got. So, Frank Clark, twenty-one million a year almost. What did he get that first year in terms of cap hit? Six and a half million. So even though this is going to hurt later, as you can see, look, twenty-six million cap hit this year, twenty-six million cap hit the next year, twenty-eight million in the final year. Yeah, that stings. But this first year, cap hit. Six and a half million. By the way, the cap is about to skyrocket. The cap is about to get the ceiling blown off. So these things that look really bad right now are not going to look as bad down the line. So, yeah, this is just one example of a team giving a player a massive contract while making it work for them with a reasonable cap hit the first year. Okay, let's do... uh, Who else? Uh, Let's try Jalen Ramsey. Okay, five years... 100 million. Jamal Adams' new contract could look like this. 20 million a year. Let's jump over here. For, what was the first year cap hit last year? 6.2 million. Yeah. Great. And by the way, the second year cap hit, only 10 and a half. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right, let's do one more. Let's uh, grab uh, Marlon Humphrey, who signed a contract with the Ravens last year. Five years, 97.5 million. That's 19 and a half million a year. Let's take a look here. First year cap hit, what was it? 7.8. So all of these cap hits that we have just looked at, and you can go look at some other players who did similar things, like Michael Thomas of the Saints. All these cap hits were lower than the 9.9 million cap hit that Jamal Adams has as of right now. Some of them were a lot lower, but all of them were at least a couple million less. So It's time to just go ahead. I know it's going to hurt. I know the numbers are going to be big and alarming and the future is going to look a little bleak. But let's just get Jamal Adams on a new contract. It'll make the rest of this offseason go a little bit easier. As I just showed you, it is reasonable to give Jamal Adams a contract with a value of about $20 million a year and have the first year cap hit be three and a half to maybe four million dollars less than the current cap hit. Look at this. You know, Jalen Ramsey got the 20 million a year. His first year cap hit, 6.2. Frank Clark got even more. His first year cap hit, 6.5. And the three to four million dollars you could save against the cap this year, that's really going to help you. That's one less player you have to cut. That's one more player you could maybe still go get. That's one less tough decision you're going to have to make. So, right here, right now, what I'm going to say is this. To the Seahawks front office, I know he has leverage. I know he's going to be expensive. I know you're going to set the market for safeties by a pretty large margin. But it's time to extend Jamal Adams. Do it today, or at least get him in the negotiating room today. I know it's going to take some wearing down for him to not ask for something absurd because you traded so much for him. But... Get Jamal Adams in the negotiating room, and let's get this extension done. It's going to be fat, but you're going to save up to, I'd say, 3 to $4 million against the cap this year. And that really matters for this year. In the future, those kinds of cap savings won't mean as much, but this year, it matters. So, I'm going to get out of here. If you don't know very much about how the salary cap and cap hits work, then hopefully you learned something today. But either way, hopefully the main thing you took away from this video is Jamal Adams needs to get extended today. And we need to structure it in a way that saves us about 3 to $4 million against the cap this season. And as I just showed you, players do it all the time. Teams do it all the time. Very easy to do, very manageable. Get it done. I'm going to stream a little later, maybe another video later. Either way, peace out. Go Hawks. See you guys later tonight. Get Jamal Adams on a long-term extension. Let's get it done. The sooner we do it, the cheaper it's going to be, by the way. The price tag can only go up. And maybe Jamal knows that, and maybe that's why this is becoming a difficult thing. But get it done. That's what I'm going to say about that. See you all later.